The Wild Swans at Cool is a somber and melancholic poem, wherein the speaker revisits a lake in Ireland, that is, the cool of the title, that he first encountered 19 years prior. Here, he observes a group of swans, as he did years before. Yet, rather than bringing joy, the swan's beauty and vitality now evoke a bittersweet sensation in the speaker. This is because the unwearied swans seem unchanged, still filled with passion, mystery, and brilliance, while the speaker's life has been irrevocably altered by the relentless march of time. The swans serve as a poignant reminder to the speaker of his own aging, distancing him from the vibrancy and potential of his youth. The poem suggests that aging brings a tangible sense of loss for the life left behind. The poem contrasts two pivotal moments, the speaker's memory of his first visit to Cool and his present-day return. By juxtaposing these moments, the poem explores the relentless passage of time and its impact on the speaker, diminishing his zest for life and rendering him weary. The poem begins by signaling that the speaker feels himself in the autumn of his life. The setting itself establishes a sense of transition, mirroring the speaker's sentiment that his hopes and dreams, later described as passion or conquest, have eluded him. Observing the numerous elegant swans, the speaker draws a contrast between his first sighting of them and the present. He admires the swans, calling them brilliant. However, all's changed since he first stood on the shore at Cool. The swans' brilliance remains a constant, true then and true now, while the speaker feels he has profoundly changed. Back then, he walked with a lighter tread, now age and life experiences have metaphorically burdened him. This juxtaposes with the swan's timeless grace, which appears unchanged to the speaker. The swans remind the speaker of his former self, as they embody traits he once possessed. While the swans remain unwearied and their hearts have not grown old, the speaker can no longer claim the same for himself. The poem implies that he has grown weary and his heart cold. The nearly two decades since the speaker first visited Cool remain largely unspecified. From mentions of lover and hearts, it can be inferred that the speaker mourns lost love. However, critics speculate that his sense of loss extends more widely. The poem was written after the horrors of the First World War and during the ongoing struggle for Irish independence from Britain. Nevertheless, the specifics are not the main point. The speaker senses these changes to be irreversible. Time only moves forward, and the good times, like his first visit to Cool, are mere memories. There's no going back. This is why the swans evoke such bittersweet feelings. Their way of being is timeless and majestic. They seem free to wander where they will and remain mysterious, beautiful, reminding the speaker of what he has lost to time. The wild swans at Cool portrays an individual grappling with the irreversible course of life. Ultimately, it speaks to life's unalterable trajectory, people cannot return to or change the past. The speaker clings to happier memories, tinged with sadness because they will never be real again. Nature in the poem is depicted as eternally beautiful and majestic, creating a division between the natural world and human existence. The speaker, acutely aware of time's passage and burdened by a sense of loss, contrasts sharply with the unchanging vigor of nature. The swans, full of passion and vitality, 
remain unaffected by human concerns, intensifying the poem's themes of isolation and the sadness of aging and heartbreak, perhaps reflecting broader issues like the First World War. Throughout the poem, the speaker projects human emotions onto the swans, highlighting the one-way relationship. Nature remains indifferent to the speaker's awe and observations. This underscores the complexity of human life against the instinctive existence of the swans. Nature is beyond the speaker's control. When he first attempted to count the swans, they soared into the sky, driven by instinct. As the poem progresses, the speaker imbues the swans with human qualities, describing them as lover with hearts pursuing passion or conquest. Yet, the distance between the speaker and the swans remains palpable. The swans' untroubled existence contrasts with the speaker's introspective struggle, emphasizing the fundamental difference between humanity and nature. This makes the speaker's life seem small and insignificant against nature's grandeur. His past desire for his life to make a difference now seems futile as he feels too weary to believe in its possibility.